Swift Rio 310, ideal little camper van, it's just under six meters long, it is a two berth with two belted seats, it's three and a half thousand kilograms on a Fiat Ducati chassis, it's a 2.3 so it is a, um, a cam belt, not a chain. So before I show you how to set it up, first thing we've got, this is for your bonnet, so that opens the bonnet up. So there's your release, we have a little flap there, as you can see, that lifts up the bonnet. And then we can put that in, and there we go. So let's get this Swift set up. So, start from the driver's side, we'll work our way down. First thing we come to is our water. So we can put a rose in and fill up the fresh water tank. There's about 80 litres on this van, fresh water tank. And what I will show you while we're down here, there is our fresh water drain off. Now can you see the little um, the nutty thing here? I'll show you because it's the same on the waste one as well. These are our waste tank. That lifts it up out of the way. And then if I just put it in again, we'll drop it down and then we can drain down our waste tank. So if we want to drain a fresh water down, we just turn the lever, that drains it out, and that closes it back up again. And that's the same for the waste tank. Um, this is our flue for our heating system. This is a Truma heating system. And they're our vents for a fridge. So we're guessing we have got a full-size fridge inside. And then here's our hookup for our 230. So we'll get some 230 into the van. So we've got the 230, so there we've got 230 going into the van. So basically now we've got a hookup cable going in, everything that needs a plug will work. Obviously if we take that out, everything that needs a plug won't work, such as your fridge or your heating on your electric or your hot plate on your, on your hobs. Next we have our gas. So I'll we'll hold two 6k bottles, we'll turn that on. We have got a crash test button here, so we'll push that one in. There is also one on here, which we're holding. They're normally activated when we're low on gas or if we swap the gas bottle over. And then I'll just show you the cassette toilet. So here's our cassette toilet. If you lift the button up, that releases it. Then we can push it back in. Any type of resistance whatsoever is because you haven't closed it on the inside. And there's a good air area here actually for putting all your toilet fluids in. So, um, good space there in your cassette toilet. So we'll work our way around the other side. So at the back of the van, we've got our two cycle bike rack and it's also fitted with a reversing camera. And then we'll move around to this side. Here we have our outside gas point. That's for our barbecue. We do have outside hatch where we come up with various items. We've got our hook up in there and we've also got our cushions to make up the extra part of the bed. Painful part is our diesel. Now this Rio has got an awning on it. It's a Fiamme awning. Dead easy to do. We slot in. And you can wind out the awning. And then if I just show you to put the legs down, you take our first leg, it pulls out, drops down, and then with the button, just whatever height, and tighten up. I'll just show you with the second one again. Pull out, drops down, and we can just tighten it up. So that's our awning out. So what we've done, we've done the three elements. We put our gas on, 
we've put fresh water in the fresh water tank and we've also put 230 um, hook up into the van for electric. So what we need to do now is prime the van up, get the water going through, um, get the gas coming through and then we can use the various appliances such as the hot water and the heating. So let's go inside. Right, so I'll quickly get some lights on for you. Right, so as you can see in the 310, we've got the two bench seats here that make up into a bed, which I'll show you. We've then got our kitchen area, and then at the back, we have a separate shower and toilet. Which is a good size for this size of van. Right, to set the motor home up, first of all, control panel over the top of the habitation door. So here we've got our control panel power on. So first of all cabin lights. So that's putting the lights on. Now if you notice here the little lights on showing vehicle battery that means we're running off the vehicle battery which we don't really want. We want to go on to leisure battery so by pressing that button there it goes to leisure. If I press that one it goes to vehicle. So we'll go back to leisure. The light we've got on there is saying we have a hookup in the van. We have 230. And frost protectors we have a little 12 volt heater in the fresh water tank so that's more for winter winter camping and then we'll move along i'll leave water pump for a second we do have view levels so fresh water with a quarter full leisure battery showing us our levels there same as vehicle battery and also a waste and then we have a cabin lights which whatever lights are on i'll switch on um, and then then we move back to water pump and then we've also got awning light, so you can see there, that switched the awning light on outside. Right, so what we want to do is we want to get water coming through the tap so we can use the hot water. So first of all, we need to find where the water heater is, which is underneath here. I'll just show you. So if we lift this bench seat up, as you can see here, this is our water heater. So what we also have is we have our water pump. So I'll just switch the pump on. That's your water pump. And then what I'm looking for is my drain off for my water heater, which is down here at the yellow lever. So I'll switch that on now. Now, if I'd not knocked that down, what would have happened is when I'd have put the water pump on, the water's coming from the fresh water tank, it's going into the water heater, and because the drain valve's open, it'll just keep sending water out the bottom of the van. So now I've closed it, I can put the pump back on. And what's happening now then is the, the pump is then pulling water from the fresh water tank, and it's gonna start to fill up the water heater, which is gonna take roughly a couple of minutes. So I've shown you everything under there. I'll put this back while we wait for the water heater to fill up and we can prime the system up. So I'll just put this tap on. So as you can see now, it's pushing air through. So the water's going into the water heater, filling up, and it's pushing air through, which is coming out of the tap. It's that uncomfortable two minutes again, isn't it? What we can do while we're waiting to, um, for this to prime up, we have switched the gas on, so let's bring the gas through. So what I'll do is, I'll put the hobs on. Now if you have swatched, swapped your gas bottle over, you will have air in the pipe. So they will take about three or five seconds back to the, the gas to come through. So as you can see, that's all, all lit. So we've got the gas coming through to the hobs and then where are we up to? We have a microwave above, 
So as well, when you haven't got a hook up in the van, the microwave won't work, so that works off electric. So it's your standard microwave like the ones that you do have at home. I can fit a lot in here in two minutes. So as you can see now the water's starting to come through. What I do like about this fan as well, I do like the tap. I do like a nice tap. So you can see the water coming through, that means we're primed up, so if I switch that off, the pump should cut out. There you go. And every time you use hot water from the hot water tank, it will automatically fill back up. So what I will do now is I will just go into the bathroom and gently open the taps because there will be an airlock on this. There we go, and bring the water through. And I would do the same on the shower. So now we know we're all primed up. So while I'm here, let's get the fridge going. So if I open the fridge up, lovely slimline fridge, and then we can switch it on. Now because it's automatic, what it's done, it's found out the first source, which is always electric at Luke 4. And then what we can do is we can move it on onto gas. And then if you just do that, that's lit. We can go onto leisure battery. Now, the reason why it's making that noise, it's a fault sign, basically because we haven't got the engine running because it takes a lot of power for, to get a fridge to go cold. So we need the engine running um, so the alternator can power the leisure battery and get the fridge um, just chilled up. More design from going from one campsite to another. So I'll move back to electric. And then here we have our temperature where we can adjust accordingly. So there's our fridge now on, on the electric. Next we shall, oh, we've got blinds and fly screens. So I'll just show you, you've got your blinds and then your fly screen, wrong way round. Blind, fly screen, and then you open as you press the button. If you hear that click, that's your first setting. Next, next one, and there's your third one. And then to bring it back down, take the window all the way up, and it comes back down. And then we can close up. So, we've got a water on, we've got a gas on. Let's have a look at the Truma heating system. Nice, simple system to use. So if I switch that on. So first one we come to is the van. This is your temperature inside your van. So we'll okay that. You can see it's off. So I can put any temperature I want right the way up to 30. So normally 18 is normally a good temperature. The next setting now is our water. So if I okay that, you can see it's off. I can put it on eco mode, hot or boost. If we put it on to boost, the heating in the van will stop because it's gonna boost the water first. So we'll put that on to eco. And then our next setting is our source. So two kilowatts of electric, one kilowatt of electric you can use. We could have a mixture of electric and gas and a mixture of electric on one kilowatt or gas or we can have gas only. So if I okay that, so we've got the heating on at 18, we've got the water on eco and we're using gas. And then I'll move over, there's our fan, and I'll put that on eco. Nice and simple operation. Right, I need to show you a couple of other things. Our leisure battery is underneath the driver's seat and our jack and wheel brace are underneath the vehicle seat, which you can access them at the bottom of the front of the seat. And then the other thing we need to show you is the consumer unit. So if I make my way by the fridge, just before I show you the consumer unit, here we've got our uh, aerial where we unscrew, that can lift up, we can tighten it up. We can also turn the aerial to whichever direction you want it. And then this little lever turns the aerial up or down. So if I undo that and bring that back down. And then at the back of the wardrobe, 
there's our booster aerial as well. Also in the wardrobe, we do have our freestanding table. And then let's move down to the sergeant unit. So if you can see our sergeant unit, here we have our 12 volt fuses. Our 230 fuses, just like the fuses you have at home. If I press that, that tells us we've got electric coming in. If that doesn't trip, then you haven't got electric coming into the van. And then we've got our charger. So that's charging the leisure battery while the hookup's in. Now, in order to use the electric, hot water and the heating, we must have this switched on. If it's not switched on, you won't be able to use the heating and the hot water on the electric. So we'll switch that back on. One thing I like about with the end bathrooms is it's a good area to get changed as well. So you're not getting changed inside the van. The good thing about this van as well, well, the washroom, is it's got a lot of storage. If you just have a look here, we've got a nice big wardrobe. And then also with the mirrors here, again, more storage. So now we move on to the cassette toilet. We press the button and that sends the water around the toilet. Now you must have your pump switched on because it uses the fresh water out the fresh water tank. So we need the pump. And then to empty, we have the gray lever, which you pull that empties the water out. Now we do have a lot of lights in the van, little things like here, little LED lights at the bottom you can see and then we do have the lights going across the draw um the drawers as well they are drawers aren't they overhead lockers overhead lockers then sorry overhead lockers john got it right and then we do have a lot of natural light coming in especially with this skylight so to open that we've got the two safety catches one either side and then now i never get it the right way There we go. I'll let some air into the van. So a really nice feature which lets a lot of light into the van. I'll we'll just shut that. And don't forget to do your two latches. And then there's another little secret idea hole which I'll have to show you. So underneath here, <clears throat> We've got a little secret idea hole there, but also lift this up. You can access the fresh water tank. It's something I don't think you'd do is because you have got your drain off outside as well. So. As well as the front uh, big skylight, we've got two more smaller ones here where we can just open up both of them, both open up, or you can have one closed, one open, and then we have our blinds, the fly screens. I nearly forgot, I nearly forgot. Um, you finished your camping all day, you finished, and you're not going to be using your van for a week or two, or even for a while, to drain it down. Don't forget the yellow lever I showed you before on the water eater. You can just see down there, lift the lever up, and that'll drain all the water out of the water eater. Open your taps up. In the, on the in this one and also in your bathroom and then drain down make sure your fresh water tank has been drained down show you outside on the driver's side blue lever and also make sure all your waste is drained down as well one final thing to do when you've drained down your fresh water tank you've drained down your water heater just run your pump um, to get the rest of the water out of all the pipes and also out of the tap as well so that's quite an important thing to do don't worry about your, your pump because it is designed to run dry, but just run everything through. Two or three minutes. For two or three minutes. Swift Rio 310. 
nice compact two berth don't forget it's under six meters it's the slim profile as well um, so it, it's like a camper van but you're getting a motorhome I do like the separation you've got your living area here oh I never showed you how to make the beds up so these pull out like so slide across to make your bed and then what you also have as well you do have another little table there and then let me just pull this off here and we do have a leg to support underneath it slots in and then if I pull this out we've then got our bed and there we go good sized bed so there you go there's your bed made up so Swift Rio 310 like I said good compact van I do like um, the separation uh, you've got your living area which made into a bedroom then you've got your your bath uh, sorry your kitchen area in the middle with your full-size fridge and then at the back you've got your end washroom with your separate shower um, so Swift 310 we've showed you how to do the heating the hot water we've showed you how to set the van up um, and until the next one